talking well, about. Hey, yeah. Bobby. Hey, what's nice up? to meet you. Nice to meet you. How you doing? What's hey. your name? Drew. Drew, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Good to see you, hey. man. How, How are, are you? Good to see you. Hi, Katrina. Hey. Katrina, nice Bobby. To meet nice to meet you. you. Brian. Hey, what's up, nice man? Nice to meet you. Are you cool if I lie on all three of these? You can do it. Right? We just got a bombshell revelation. Yeah, What's this? That Orca is one of the, the first openly gay Star Wars characters. Who you told you this? The producers, <laughs> the executive producers. Oh, I'm so happy we were allowed to say <laughs> yes, it. Yes, yes. I have, I have had a sentence prepared for a year and a half. Let's hear it. <laughs> if someone would finally ask me, I would say, all I could say is that when Flick says I love you, Orca says I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I'm so oh, so happy. that's the first time. Yeah, it's yeah. the best. They're the they're the cutest, and they're little family. Glenn the robot and Bitey the gorg. Yeah, my favorite. They're adorable. I love that. <laughs> She's sending. <laughs> 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 promise. <laughs> so with with that in mind, uh, one thing I've been asking everyone as we get into this next season um, is, what are you most proud of uh, about being in Resistance and what it's done to the the fandom. Um, I think it might be that. I think it might be the inclusion of it. I think bef- even that, just the idea, when as a Star Wars fan, when I first auditioned for this, didn't know it was Star Wars. First of all, the characters that I auditioned were, were called Oscar and Felix. You know, like it well, wasn't well. it was the kind of odd couple. Like it was just that. And me and Jim got cast, and we kind of got to build it all together. But when I first started getting scripts and. As a Star Wars fan, when someone sends you a secret script that says Project X on it, and then the the password is a very Star Warsy password, I was like, <laughs> "Are you kidding me?" Like, I was like, "Free!" I was like, "Getting scripts was like Christmas morning." Like it was like, "I can't believe I'm in Star Wars." <laughs> like I was I was a child. But then when you get them and you realize that this show isn't the Force, this is the people that work in the bar, the people that go to the bar. Mm-hmm. The people on the ships that don't have a lot of credits, you know what I mean? The 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 it's the it's the working people, and that was super fascinating to me. And then when I saw the first episode, Kaz and Tam, and it's just it's so inclusive. It's it it's so Star Warsy. It's mm-hmm. it's every it's every great thing about Star Warsy. I mean, like I don't know if this is like a thing too, but like there was a little part of me the first week that was like. I think I'm kind of like the first, like, kind of vaguely Italian guy <laughs> in the Star Wars universe. Like, I don't know if there's a planet, a very Jersey kind of planet somewhere in the Star Wars universe. But I, I was nervous, to be honest. I was like, that's the kind of the voice. Like, when we kind of came up with it, I I was kind of, me and Jim were playing stuff. And that's kind of where it went. And I was like, you know, there's no Brooklyn on Endor. And I don't want to. I don't want to piss off Star Wars fans because I'm one of them, you know, but like it made me happy that it's just them. It's those two, Flix and Orca, are just very happy together. And, oh. <laughs> I love them. Can you talk about the, the recording sessions with Jim and how you guys have uh, been able to work together and kind of build and how much they lean on you guys to kind of you know, there's always the, the, the text of the script, but then you guys are, are great at improv and being able to build the characters as you know them. So what what are the, what's the process kind of evolved into as you're in some Uh It was interesting. I think that has been the coolest part about it is that it was a process. I think I thought, like, I'm in Star Wars, just do what they say and go home and watch it and cry. <laughs> like, <laughs> because, like, I didn't want to, you know, whatever. But it, it was this process, and I, I've said this in a couple interviews today, but I remember when I went to the audition, I hadn't I knew Jim Rash very little. We had met a couple times. We had friends in common. I'm just a huge fan of his. But when I walked in the room and saw that he was the other guy auditioning, we kind of went like, "Hey!" <laughs> and the only way I can explain it is like, I think we got the part before we started doing the audition because I think they saw Flix and Orca talking to each other and went like, "Oh, these guys. Look at these two. They get along. Like, let's figure that out." And it kind of started from there and changed a little bit and Jim and I both have improv backgrounds, so, like, any kind of improv they let us do was the best because it's, like, uh, uh, those shorts that they did are very me and Jim improv heavy. Mm -hmm. And the fact that, like, I said a sentence that contributed to Star Wars is a very nerdy thing. I'm very proud of that. (laughs) Like, I can't believe it. But also, my favorite part about it was I have a vast knowledge of Star Wars stuff, and Jim does not. (laughs) So, like, that would be... I was so clearly trying to shoehorn things into improv, like, 
I think I tried to at some point. I kept like trying to Forrest Gump uh, them, where I would insert <laughs> them into pre-existing or future Star Wars things to, so that they would be forced to make it canon and have them there. And Jim would be like, "I don't know what that is," <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and it was, but it was fun. It kind of informed the characters a little bit. You have so much fun during presses during Star- everything. <laughs> well, Star Wars Celebration looked like you're having a blast in Chicago. I just recently, like this past week, was thinking to myself, I had way too much fun at Star Wars Celebration, and I must remember when I go to those things that I am working and that I am doing a job, because they were like, come over here, and I was like, hold on! <laughs> like running into the thing to go buy Star Wars stuff. But yes, I, 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 I enjoy it. I'm at a point in my life where I go like, yeah, I got super lucky. I got to do everything I wanted to do as a kid, and, I, and I'm, I'm really, it's not lost on me. Now that you're in the family, you're in the club. Can you believe it? Mm-hmm. How's it changed you as a fan? I have some notes. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, uh, it it feels insane to be a part of the Disney, a whole Disney thing. I'm on Ducktales too. Like I'm Louie on Ducktales and like that and like that. Being allowed into that world is a fascinating thing, and it's a really great place full of talented, passionate people who love this stuff. And I feel very at home amongst those people, so I'm glad they like me there. Um, I would change the garbage cans at Lucasfilm. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I the fact that they're the fact, yeah, the fact that like I'm allowed to do that stuff. I mean, look at my SNL career. I ninety percent of the stuff I did was I was trying to get Star Wars stuff on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I I've always been a fan. I, I, have I talked about it at all in past interviews? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Uh, as a fan, have you been to Galaxy's Edge yet? Um, I've been four times. I'm going again on the 10th. Okay. You've got your cantina reservation. <laughs> Always. Um, <laughs> being on a Disney couple Disney cartoons doesn't hurt, by the right, way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, I enjoy it. I enjoy that culture anyway. I didn't go to Disney until I was very much older. Until I came out here, I was like 40. But um, uh, I enjoy it. That Galaxy's Edge is a, is, a, is, a, is a beautiful place. I keep telling people whenever they go, I'm like, there's a stairwell. Mm-hmm. Not there's not it's not part of an attraction. It's not anything. There's just this one stairwell that curves up, and there's a door, and there's like a little thing next to it. It's my favorite part in Galaxy's Edge because I'm like, it's just so Star Warsy. <laughs> it just looks so Star Warsy, and it makes me really happy. I want to go live in there. <laughs> Since you get scripts that are parallel with the canon that's going on in the theatricals. <laughs> As a huge fan, and of course NDA'd out the, uh, the wazoo, but just from a fan's perspective, when something floats by you, and since you know canon so well, have you had moments where you've just kind of had to walk it off once you found something? Thank God, no. Thank God, no. I think, I think in the first season, there was one thing, but like, I also, and I shouldn't say this, but I, I wouldn't read it. Ah, I would read my lines, and then I would be like, I don't want to get spoiled. So I wouldn't read it, because I didn't want to get spoiled, but uh, there's, I, I, I think all fans do love when, ooh, it's crossing over, like you know that stuff, and there, there's a lot of fun stuff this season for that. And I think they did a great job in the first season with that too. So personal, just you, new Star Wars projects comes up. Where would you want to see yourself involved? Yeah, <laughs> in any in any possible way. Um, I I mean, yeah, gosh, I've been. I, I've been pitching them ideas. I just want, I, I, yeah, I have so many. I, any, I, I, don't, I don't know how to answer that question because literally if they were like, hey, we got this um, uh, Star Wars thing. It's, we're just going to put you in a, a room and we're not going to do anything. I'd be like, all right. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, I mean, the fact that I'm already a little piece of it right now is, is the craziest thing in the world. If something more comes out of that, I would, I would obviously die. <laughs> Would it be more exciting for you to write it or perform it? No. Oh, well, because the anxiety. Of, well, I, I have, I have written a lot of Star Wars stuff that I'm trying to pitch because yeah. I'm a fan. Yeah. But um, I realize the responsibility that comes with it, yeah. and I, and I think I'm a better performer than I am a writer. So I would, I would, yeah, I, a faceless alien, something like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like just to be part of that. Yeah, anything. I would do anything like that. The Mandalorian, I, I literally would hold boom on the Mandalorian. It looks, I'm just a fan already. It just looks so good. I can't wait to see that. Do you have a favorite Star Wars character besides Orca? I always said Jabba the Hutt. 
Because uh, when I was growing up, job of the ho- besides Orca, uh, I also play Yanni the Goat Man. I tell everyone that too, on this on this Resistance. <laughs> yes. um, his name's Yanni, and it makes me laugh. Um, uh, <laughs> um, I always used to say Job of the Hut because Job of the Hut to me was just Star Wars. It's a bunch of guys inside a puppet mm-hmm. in a weird bar and with a bunch of other people with masks on. Like, it, like that was Star Wars to me. It was just like a bunch of people in the seventies built this thing in the desert and then filmed it. <laughs> like that's <laughs> fun to me. But I think now, I think I definitely is Princess Leia easily. Mm-hmm. Because I don't know what's going to happen in Rise of Skywalker, but I'm really enjoying the the theories and the ideas. Like that, she, technically, she is the linchpin of everything. Like she, if she was trained instead of Luke, if Yoda trained her, you know what I mean. Like that whole side of it, and and the idea. Name one other person in the Star Wars universe. Maybe like Admiral Akbar might be like who has accumulated more. Like princess, general, senator. Jedi, she's the most powerful in every way. So I think maybe her. That's awesome. So you have a lot of geek credit because of your knowledge and your love for it. Who's the biggest fan on the crew right now? On the show? Yeah. Me. <laughs> and I'll beat up anyone who says different. Um, I, I, think, I truly think it might be me, but I think, well... No, I'll take that back. I'm the most vocal. I'm the most unashamed. <laughs> um, but it still might be me. It still might be me. Have you collected anything? Since last oh, maybe, maybe, you? maybe Athena. Mm-hmm. I might say Athena. Do you have a license plate to match? I don't, but I do. But my my back windshield wiper <laughs> was a lightsaber for a little while. <laughs> I have been for the past couple weeks have been toying with the idea of get Orca has a symbol on his shoulder and I've been toying with the idea of getting that tattoo. I think I should. Pretty sure first. Yeah. yeah. But I You're I'm afraid. Pretty pressure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I should. Do little kids hear your voice and, and recognize you either from DuckTales or or this? Uh, not until I laugh. I don't know why. I can talk to someone for 20 minutes and they don't notice and then I laugh and they go, "Hey, wait a minute." <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what it wow. is. Is it more DuckTales or is it more? I don't get DuckTales a lot. DuckTales, uh, I kind of, DuckTales a little, like, a little more kiddie, and I think they might even pitch it up a little bit. Um, but uh, I very rarely am going around town talking like this. So, like, <laughs> sometimes. But, <laughs> but uh, no, for some reason, when I la- like, I'll be in a store talking to somebody, or, and then I'll laugh, and three people will go, hey. <laughs> I don't know why. I have a weird giggle. Would you uh, like to see, like, are you a fan of other mediums of Star Wars storytelling? And if there was one you could pick to see more Star Wars stories in, which would it be? Wow. Um, Yes, I'm a fan of anything. I I mean, like, the way the stuff, the way the Mandalorian looks does not look like television. It looks so good. And, And as a Star Wars fan and purist, I go, like, they're using miniatures again. Like, they're going back and doing all that stuff that made it so cool Mm -hmm. to me so something like that you know what I mean like I would love yeah there'd be a lot of really cool puppetry for Flix and yeah (laughs) can I show you (laughs) yes please Flix and Orca are you Nominated. They got nominated for the Emmy. I sent them. There. I uh, I had this made. Oh, see, I was just asking you. You collected more. That's amazing. Oh, I had this made because I wanted to pitch a spinoff with yeah. them live action, and I wanted to show like this is what it could look like. Yeah. But oh my god, that's and so I did that, awesome. and also. Is that through your Muppet, like your Muppet friends? Um, Jamie <laughs> Bresler, really this girl. She used to work at SNL. She worked with Henson. She's a, she's an amazing puppeteer. And makes these beautiful puppets. And I just went, you got to make me one someday. And she made me, I was in Monsters University. She made me a ch- the, my character from that. And then when I got Star Wars, I called her up immediately. Oh, my um, God. That so is great. so cool. And then this was l- this week. <laughs> oh, God, where is it? Sorry. 
sorry. No, please <laughs> take your time. <laughs> it's scale to oh, the wow. figure. It'll. I had a just had one made. Wow. <laughs> and having it painted now, but it's like an actual figure scale to the right size. It's the same size as Yoda figure, oh. and it matches all the Star Wars Resistance ones. That is so That's awesome. awesome. So now you have your own action figure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had to make it because I, I didn't know if they, I couldn't wait. <laughs> when they, I was a stormtrooper. I'm a stormtrooper in a couple episodes, which is definitely not lost on me either. And also, right before I started doing the, the stormtrooper voice, my heart started pounding. I was on Saturday Night Live for nine years, live television. <laughs> not once did I get nervous after the first episode. And doing that stormtrooper voice, I was like, <laughs> I was so nervous I was gonna get it wrong. They're so distinct, you know. Like I got very, I got, I took it way too seriously. But when they came out with the Star Wars figures, the Resistance figures, and I have a picture, literally in tears, holding the Star Trooper one, like like a child. Wait, calling back to SNL, if we've got a, a hot second, what do you think uh, your radar, your Stormtrooper, would be doing today, heading after the Last Jedi? Do you think he survived? <laughs> Maybe we'll see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Such a pleasure. So great to see you. Good seeing you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Such a pleasure. Yes. And you guys are all wrapped too. Oh, yes. Great.